Hey, it's Becky. Here's a birthday present I made for my friend and fellow YouTuber, Estefany. It's an embroidery I designed with some of her favorite motifs, as well as some electronics to play sound and light up the birthday candles. Keep watching to see how I made it. Last year, Estefany and I found out our birthdays are only a day apart from one another. So naturally we decided to do a YouTube collab to celebrate and make each other gifts. If you don't already know her, you should. Estefany makes awesome tech projects like her 3D printed Daft Punk helmet and homegrown Instagram filters, as well as hilarious videos about software engineering. Please go over to her channel, subscribe, and wish her a happy birthday. The link is in the description. If you came here from Estefany's channel, welcome. I hope you'll feel right at home and consider subscribing to my channel. As usual, I've got a link in the description to a full write-up for this project, including all the links to the supplies and tools I used to build it. I knew Estefany moved into a house not too long ago, so I decided to make something to help decorate all that new wall space. Embroidery is a natural choice for me, but this time I used a computerized embroidery machine instead of doing it by hand. Stick around till after the build to see me open my gift from Estefany. I designed the art in Adobe Illustrator to feature a big piece of her favorite chocolate cake with birthday candles on top. The plant-like embellishment around the cake is made with leaves that look like the state of Texas, where Estefany calls home. And of course, I had to include her cats, Teddy and Luna, and some of her logo lightning bolts as well. This video is not sponsored, but Brother did send me this embroidery machine a while back for free. I never made much with it until a new code library for making machine embroidery with processing was released by the Studio for Creative Inquiry at Carnegie Mellon. See, embroidery software is notoriously proprietary, hard to use, and expensive, and the onboard default art and fonts can only take you so far. P Embroider makes it free and easy to create my own machine embroidery files. You can take advantage of processing shape drawing capabilities, or in my case, generate stitch patterns from black and white images. I separated my art into layers based on thread color. And then I exported a series of black and white GIFs into the data folder of the library example for working with images. And then I changed the example to match the image file names I made. Processing previews the stitch paths and generates the appropriate file for my machine, which I transfer using a USB flash drive. I did some experimenting with the example code to pick out the best stitch settings for each element before I tried to combine them all together. This is the most complex art I've attempted on my embroidery machine so far. After it finished, I trimmed the extra threads and the stabilizer from around the artwork. The embroidery then gets mounted to a sticky board made for this purpose. I wore gloves because you have to press down pretty hard and I didn't want to get any sweat or dirt from my hands onto the clean embroidery. I 3D printed the frame for this piece using Geeky Fay Art's modular design. I used silver PLA on my Creality CR10S Pro. I had a nice tight fit between the parts and found that my bench vise came in handy for joining up some of the pieces. 
After wrapping the excess fabric around the back of the board, I slid it into the frame and added the last few frame pieces. Next, it was time to add electronics. At the bare minimum, I was planning to add candle flicker LEDs to the birthday cake, so the front of the embroidery would have some electronic flair, and who knows, maybe it would make a good nightlight. So I poked holes and threaded the legs of the LEDs through to the back, where I added one resistor per LED and extended the wires to a small circuit board. I found this touch board in my stash of Arduino compatibles and thought it would be a great way and an easy way to add sound to this project as well. It's got an SD card for MP3s and capacitive touch sensors along the side. The code it comes with plays the sounds on the card when you touch the contacts. It's also got a USB port for power so I can use a nice looking cable when it comes time to hang it up. I wanted these LEDs to be always on, so I attached them directly to power instead of one of the microcontroller input-output pins. To play the sound, I attached an audio amplifier and a speaker. I found a few different songs to put on the SD card. To extend the touch sensor contacts to the outside of the frame, I drilled holes through it and installed a few bolts and nuts. To connect to the touch board, I twisted small wires around the bolts and then applied some heat shrink tubing to hold it all in place. The last component I wired up is a real-time clock module. See, this is a birthday project, so I thought it would be cool if it could tell when it's actually her birthday and play something special on that day. The clock can keep track of the date and time and even has its own little battery. One thing I learned about this one I got from Amazon is that it's designed to recharge a rechargeable battery, so to use it with my regular CR2032, I needed to clip off this resistor here at the corner of the board. After modifying the touch board code to include the clock module functionality, I made a few finishing touches, like soldering on the speaker to slim down the bulky screw terminals, melting a channel for the power cable to pass through the frame, and stitching the components in place. I'm really happy with how this turned out. She can start and stop playback with each of the four touchpads on the side of the frame, and it'll play even more sounds when it's her birthday. The only thing left to do is pack it up and ship it to Houston. Head over to a Stephanie's channel to watch her open it. Here it is. Okay. I'm trying to be really careful. Stephanie said it's fragile. I don't want to break it. But it's hard to open the tabs on a box when they've been taped shut. Okay. Oh, okay. See, very fragile. Okay, oh, oh, it's a terrarium. Oh, that's so cute. It says earthquake simulator. Okay, let's see, what does her note say about this? Happy birthday, Becky, I made you a disaster terrarium featuring Sunhee the horse. 
Sunny. Oh, Sunny. Okay, we had a conversation about horseback riding as a, as a child. Awesome. This is so cute. It has springs. Okay, the spring is glued. Here's the horse. This. Oh, it has a switch in it. Okay, I gotta turn it on. But hang on, it has these miniature tools at the bottom. It has a DIY crafting element to putting it back together after it got shaken around and chipping. Okay, so I see there's two springs there. That other spring is supposed to attach there. No worries. Just glue it back on. It's obviously supposed to go right there. You like disaster movies, and what's the scariest disaster? Earthquakes. What did you want for Secret Santa? Terrariums. <laughs> Who was your friend when you took horseback riding lessons? Sunny, the horse, yep. Okay, we're gonna put this back together. Here. hold it there until it cools. It's pretty good, yep. And then we put in some tools. <laughs> nice, okay, and then I'm gonna turn it on. Pretty funny and awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Happy birthday. <laughs> this video was made with generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.